probably the most important thing kids can learn how to do these days, but only 25% of the K-12 schools in the nation offer computer science with programming and coding as an option. Earlier this year, President Barack Obama called for $4 billion to bring computer science curriculum to every single K-12 school across the nation. In the announcement, White House CTO Megan Smith called computer science a new basic skill that is necessary for economic opportunity and social mobility. Here's the thing, there's a big gap in the tech industry. Blacks and Latinos are among the fastest growing populations in the US. By 2040, Blacks and Latinos will make up 42% of the US population. Today, Blacks and Latinos only make up about 5% of the workforce at top tech companies. But before Obama can bring computer science to every K-12 student in the nation, Congress first has to approve his 2017 budget. Luckily, there are a ton of organizations stepping up in the meantime, like Code.org, Black Girls Code, Code 2040, Code Academy, and many others. To help us understand the importance of teaching young kids how to code, we have Mission Bid CEO Stevon Cook right here in the studio. Stevon Cook is CEO at MissionBit, a nonprofit organization that aims to eliminate the tech divide for young underserved people in the Bay Area. MissionBit works closely with the San Francisco Unified School District to offer semester-long computer programming courses to public schools. The courses are taught by college students pursuing degrees in computer science with volunteer support from professional software engineers. This semester, students who participate in MissionBit will also have the opportunity to take a free Hack Reactor prep course and visit a Silicon Valley tech company. Hey, Stevon, thank you so much for joining me here today. Um, so let's jump right in. Is it ever too late or too early to teach someone how to code? No, no. I mean, the emphasis obviously is on starting earlier so someone can get their bearings and develop a love for it. Can you tell me a bit about the, the digital divide in tech and what, in your opinion, is causing that? Yeah, there's a huge divide uh, just in terms of, believe it or not, access to the internet. So this mm -hmm. kind of starts there. Who has uh, the internet at home? Who has a computer at home? A lot of the young people that come to Mission Bit, you know, they, they come from low-income communities, African-American, Latino students, and the first time they use a computer um, or they, they, they intimately are involved with the computer sometimes is, is with us. And, mm -hmm. uh, and if, if you look at the public schools, um, not enough schools have the resources to keep up to date with the technology. So they're using outdated computers and not much time in the computer lab. So there's a huge digital divide uh, that starts with access to the internet uh, and people having access to a home computer. And then that continues with knowing what goes on behind the screen and how to make a computer, computer do certain demands. So that's what we do with coding. What's the difference between inequality in tech versus uh, inequity in tech? Inequality, uh, the, there's, a, there's like a good picture that showcases this. I think I've seen that picture actually, okay. but go on. Okay. Inequality speaks to um, all things being equal, so people having the same amount of something. So uh, we, equality is we both get $5, mm -hmm. right? Um, inequality is, or inequity, equity speaks to like how much more a person needs in order to make up for the deficiencies that they may come into a situation with. So right. if I give you both $5 to purchase a f food, but you live in a community where the average, with the, where a lunch costs $20 and you only got five, mm -hmm. and you live in a place where the lunch is $2 and you have five, then that's, that's an inequity. You need actually more in a certain situation in order to make up for the differences that, that, you, may, that you may have. Got it. And why, why should, you, you touched on this a little bit earlier, but why should kids in particular in K through 12 schools learn how to code? Well, it is where all the jobs are, where a lot of the jobs are currently, and more and more our society is moving to an internet-based society. Mm -hmm. So to have access to not only technology, right? Te if you just talked about technology, not coding, if you want to apply for college, you have to go to the internet. If you want to apply for a job, you have to go on the internet. Uh, if you want to um, figure out, you know, what I mean, it's everything that you, you essentially need is is internet based, and, and not enough people 
and low income communities have access to the internet. In San Francisco, it's particularly important that people learn how to code because we have this huge gap in income inequality. Uh, there was a recent report that the, the average white resident makes $104,000 a year and the average African American makes $29,000 a year. Uh, so that is happening in a city where there's a huge demand for jobs right. in the tech industry. On top of that, we have a public school system where only 6% of the current high school students are taking the computer science class. Mm. So we have 17,000 young people taking high, high school, in, in high school in San Francisco public schools. They're all leaving our system into a city as a part of an economy where they don't, they've never seen what it takes to actually have uh, the jobs that are available in their hometown. So we're, we, we're sort of continuing a process where we're pricing people out, uh, we're furthering the, the income divide, and right. what we introduce coding, we have an opportunity to, to interrupt that, that trend. Nice. Well, I'm, I'm really glad that you're doing what you're doing at Mission Bit, and thank you so much for coming in today. Yeah, thanks for having me. Thanks. Bullish airs every Wednesday at 10 a.m. Eastern, 7 a.m. Pacific, and you can find it here on TechCrunch.com.